Hello, I'm Sheridan Lamb from Lombard, Illinois. Today I would like to discuss the importance of lens thickness in IOL power calculation and refractive outcome after cataract surgery. Modern cataract surgery requires placing the IOL in the capsular bag. This makes natural lens central in the determination of the position of the intraocular lens in the eye or the effective lens position. Advanced IOL formulas such as the Holiday 2 have been developed to estimate the effective lens position. The Holiday 2 uses anterior segment parameters to estimate the effective lens position. These parameters include the anterior chamber depth, the lens thickness, the horizontal corneal diameter, also known as the white to white. Currently, the most common optical biometry units are the Iowa Master 500 and the Lens Star. Both measure the anterior chamber depth and the horizontal corneal diameter. One of the main differences between these two units is that the Lens Star measures the lens thickness, whereas Iowa Master does not. Therefore, when using the Iowa Master, with the Holiday 2, the lens thickness has to be estimated from H. Recently, I completed a study, soon to be published, in the Journal of Refractive Surgery on how refractive outcome is affected if the H-based lens thickness is used instead of optically measured lens thickness in IOL power calculation. The study included 93 eyes from 93 patients, one eye from each patient. The average age was 73, all patients had biometry with the lens star and the IOL power calculation with the Holiday 2 formula. The average axial length was 23.8 millimeters with a range of 21.6 to 28.7. The mean average keratometry was 43.8 diopter with a range of 40.9 to 48.1. These are relatively normal parameters. Postoperatively, the mean absolute error of our group was 0.14 diopter. However, when we back calculated the expected refractive outcome with H base lens thickness, the mean absolute error increased to 0.25. The difference was statistically significant. The conclusion of the study is that optically measured lens thickness outperformed H base lens thickness in refractive outcome. The reason is that the formulae that estimate lens thickness from H assume a perfect linear relationship between H and the lens thickness with a correlation coefficient of one. This is a false as assumption. The true correlation coefficient between age and the lens thickness is actually 0.45, significantly impacting the refractive outcome. Furthermore, at 0.25 diopter, the mean absolute error with age-based lens thickness is nearly identical to the mean absolute error with emergent ultrasound, which I published in 2011 in the Journal of Cataract and Refractive Surgery. In other words, in order for optical biometry to surpass emergent ultrasound in refractive outcome, the lens thickness has to be measured, not estimated from age. The take-home message is this. Lens thickness matters and has to be measured. Ignoring the true lens thickness puts the cataract surgeon and the patient at a disadvantage. If you're looking to upgrade your biometry, the lens star should be on the top of your list. In conclusion, I would like to point out two landmark papers on refractive outcome after cataract surgery. The first was from Wilmer and was published in 1987 in the Archives of Ophthalmology. The paper was on refractive outcome after extracapsular cataract surgery with the implantation of a posterior chamber lens. The conclusion was that there was no difference in refractive outcome whether an IOL was selected based on biometry or a standard 20 diopter IOL was implanted regardless of biometry. The second landmark paper was published in 2011 in Ophthalmology by Han, in which the benchmark of refractive outcome after FACO was set at 80% of eyes should have refractive error of less than 0.5 diopter three months after surgery. In this study, optical biometry, microincisional FACO, and foldable IOL were employed. These two studies show that as cataract surgery becomes ever more precise, the refractive outcome would depend even more on the precision and accuracy of biometry. Thank you. Well, hello, I'm Warren Hill from Mesa, Arizona, and today we're going to talk about some of the enhanced axial features of the lens star, and specifically the lens thickness. And as we all know, um, a traditional immersion A scan uh, looks like this, where we have a uh, graphic representations of the anterior lens capsule, posterior lens capsule, certainly the two spikes of the cornea, and the vitreoretinal interface. 
For the Lenstar, the graphic display is exactly the same. We have the anterior and posterior uh, portions of the cornea, the uh, anterior and uh, posterior uh, portions of the lens, and then the retina. We take all these, we put them together, and we get the axial length. One thing that I find uh, very, very uh, useful for this particular instrument is the lens thickness. Now, some of the newer formulas, such as Holiday 2 and Olson, um, have given us an enhanced refractive outcomes by uh, including the lens thickness. But there haven't been any papers until recently showing that this actually does matter. Now, looking at the uh, graphic display of the lens thickness uh, with the Hogstrite uh, Lensstar, we can see some pretty amazing things, and I consider this to be a technological achievement. We have the anterior lens capsule, we have the cortex nucleus interface, multiple opacities of the nucleus, and also the same thing on the back side. And when you think about it, the posterior lens capsule is about five microns thick, and it's a clear structure, and yet the software can figure this out for us. Same with the anterior lens capsule, probably about 12 microns, and the software can find us, find it for us, rather. So it gives us the lens thickness measurement. So what does this mean? Well, Sheridan Lamb in Chicago, Illinois, uh, recently published a paper in the Journal of Refractive Surgery showing that when we actually use the lens thickness in the Holiday 2 formula compared to um, age-based uh, estimations of lens thickness, the refractive outcomes are statistically better than if not. So I think this is proof that adding the lens thickness to the Holiday formula, a measurement that's actually carried out, will enhance our refractive outcomes.